Hello, and welcome back to module two. In this module, we are going to cover organelles and parts of the cell. So organelles are a substructure within the cell that has a specific job that it performs. And these are only found in eukaryote cells. So I do want to emphasize that we are also going to cover in this different parts of the cell. So you will see uh, different things that are located in prokaryotes as well, but they typically do not have specific functions. So for example, you might see like a plasma membrane that is going to be in both eukaryote and prokaryote cells, but the plasma membrane in the eukaryote cell is going to have a phospholipid bilayer that lets things in and out of the cell. So we'll get into all that, but I just want to let you know, just because the first module I know we had talked about prokaryotes that don't have organelles, so you may see that throughout this, but the organelles are specifically found in eukaryote cells, but let's get into it. All right, so let's review that the two main types of cells are prokaryotes, so we have our simple little prokaryote cell, and we have our eukaryotes, which look like they're something from outer space and they're super complex and all of these different things within the eukaryote cell have a specific function and we're going to talk about it. All right, so let's review the different parts of a cell. So the cell membrane. So these are found in both eukaryote and prokaryote cells. It is a phospholipid bilayer with hydrophilic ends on the outer layer facing the external environment and the inner layer has hydrophilic ends facing the inside. This is a phospholipid bilayer with hydrophilic ends on the outer facing external environment as well as the inner facing layer. So what this means, a lot of words there, is that if we look up here, this is a phospholipid bilayer. So we have hydrophilic ends are these red circles and they are facing the outside. What happens is this creates a thin semi-permeable membrane of lipids and proteins that act as a highly selective barrier for passive and active transport. So these let things in and out of the cell because it's semi-permeable, right? So certain things can go through into the cell and other things cannot. So only small molecules can diffuse through. A barrier between the cell and external environment is what this is. And a larger molecules will need to use active transport or vesicles. So we can see this is a channel protein, so these bigger proteins have to go through this larger system. Cholesterol in the cell membrane adds stiffness and flexibility and glycolipids help the cell to recognize the other cells of the organism. The proteins in the cell membrane help give the cells shape and special proteins help the cell to communicate with its external environment. So we can see this is a channel protein, but there can also be different types of proteins along this phospholipid bilayer. All right. So then we also have a nucleus. So the nucleus is found only in eukaryote cells. And remember we talked about because organelles in eukaryote cells are only found in eukaryote cells. So organelles are structures that have specific functions within the cell. So the nucleus is going to regulate all cell activity. It is really the brain of the cell. Um, it also hosts cell replication. It does this through DNA, which codes for enzymes and carries out important cell jobs. It contains the chromosomes and regulates the DNA of a cell. And the nucleus is responsible for passing on genetic traits between generations. It contains a nuclear envelope, a nucleoplasm, a nucleolus, a nuclear pore, chromatin, and ribosomes. And prokaryote cells lack an organized nucleus. Remember, we went over that. There's no nucleus in prokaryote cells. So then located inside the nucleus in eukaryote cells is chromosomes but prokaryote cells it's different they do have chromosomes 
but they're kind of just floating inside the cell. So kind of in like the center of the cell, but it's not enclosed in a nucleus. So what it does, so chromosomes are highly condensed thread-like rods of DNA. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. And the genetic materials that store information about plants and animals. So we can see we have a chromosome. And if we look into these little, the X's that are coming off, if we unwind that, this is all just genes and DNA, which is made of nucleotides. So we have our cell with our nucleus. We have our chromosomes inside the nucleus. And it can be unraveled and break down to all of these different things. So this is looking at prokaryote DNA. So remember we talked about prokaryotes do have chromosomes, but they're not in a nucleus. So we can see they're kind of just floating in the center here. This is called a nucleoid, which is chromosomal DNA. They're circular, double-stranded pieces of DNA, but not surrounded by a nucleus membrane. We also can see a plasmid here. So that is going to be a small, circular, independent, double-stranded DNA molecule. And plasmids can frequently be transmitted from one bacteria to another. So what do chromosomes do? We went over this. But in prokaryotes specifically, there are only one chromosome and no associated proteins. And... Yes. So in prokaryote cells, similarly, these chromosomes are highly condensed thread-like rods of DNA. They have the genetic material. They have no associated proteins and they have only one chromosome, which means that they don't come in pairs like with the eukaryote cell. There is just one chromosome. We can kind of see the small circular DNA. All right, so inside the nucleus of jumping back to eukaryote cells, there is something called chromatin. So this is inside that nucleus. It consists of DNA and protein that make up chromosomes. Eukaryote chromosomes are composed of chromatin, and each consists of two complementary strands of DNA tightly coiled around a Histone. All right, so let's take a look at this. All right, so we have our chromosome here, and if we unwind it, the chromosome is made of the chromatin. And if we unwind that down, it's made of DNA. And if we unwind it all the way to the bottom, we see a protein that is wrapped in a histone, or a stone wrapped in a protein. And if we unwrap this DNA all the way down, we can see a histone. So we can see the protein that is associated with the DNA. All right. So also located in the nucleus is the nucleolus. So this is found in eukaryote cells and it consists of a protein it's small round and does not have a membrane and it's involved in the protein synthesis and synthesizes and stores rna so we can see the nucleolus this whole thing is the nucleus and the nucleolus is right in the center and again it's important to know that its job is it is synthesizes and stores rna and synthesizes proteins then there is the nuclear envelope, again, only in eukaryote cells, and this encloses the structure of the nucleus, and it consists of an inner and outer membrane made of lipid, lipids. Remember we talked about the plasma membrane? This is very similar. It's made of lipids. So we can see that here, the nuclear envelope, and we can see our phospholipid bilayer with the proteins. So very, very similar to that outer membrane as well. We then have nuclear pores, so we can see those are right here around the nucleus, and these are involved in the exchange of materials between the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Again, very similar to that outer membrane of the cell. 
So then we have a nuclear plasm. Again, only in eukaryote cells because they're the only ones that have a nucleus. And this is the liquid within the nucleus and it's similar to the cytoplasm. So we can see that here, nucleoplasm. So all the liquid that is inside. So then there are chloroplasts, which are found in eukaryotic plant cells specifically. So it is the site of photosynthesis. So the chloroplasts are what create photosynthesis. So now ribosomes. So ribosomes are found in eukaryote and prokaryote cells. And what they do is they use RNA to transcribe the original DNA code into proteins. And they're located on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So we're going to go over this a little later, but in eukaryote cells, there is a rough endoplasmic reticulum and a smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And I'm pretty sure many people will get a question about these on the exam because it's something that can easily get confused they're very closely they sound very similar right well here is the trick to remember part of the difference we'll go over the big differences but rough endoplasmic reticulum starts with an r so they have ribosomes the smooth endoplasmic reticulum does not have ribosomes so keep that in mind so the mitochondria, we can see that right here. And what it does is it's really the cell's powerhouse. It supplies the energy for the cell. It uses oxygen to burn glucose and produce ATP for cell energy. It's involved in cell growth and death. The inner membrane contains its own DNA separate from the one in the nucleus or ribosomes. And between the inner and outer membranes are folds, which are called cristae, and chemical reactions occur here that release energy, control water levels in the cell, and recycle and create proteins and fats. And it uses aerobic respiration, also occurs in the mitochondria. All right, so the cytoplasm, this is found in both uh, prokaryote and eukaryote cells. And what it does is it's this watery medium inside the cell that contains cytosol and organelles are found within this plasma membrane, not in the nucleus. So of course we can see this if we look at this eukaryote cell since that's the only one with a nucleus. In the nucleus there's no organelles in there, right? All the organelles are floating in the cytoplasm out here. We have our mitochondria, we can see all these red dots, those are the ribosomes you know, there are centrosome floating. So again, all of our organelles are out here. And cytosol is the liquid material in the cell. It's mostly water, but also contains some floating molecules. And if we see over here, we can see in the prokaryote cell, our cytoplasm is this kind of yellow, gel that's floating and we can also see our ribosomes floating around uh, in there as well. All right, so in eukaryote cells, we have a cytoskeleton and microtubules. So we can see uh, that here, our cytoskeleton out here and the microtubules are these lines. This consists of microtubules that help shape and support the cell. So and it provides structure for the cell and allows for transport. So we talked about this a little earlier, but the rough endoplasmic reticulum we can see is right here, right? It kind of comes, actually goes all the way around all of this kind of uh, blue and yellow. And it has ribosomes and produces proteins. It is a tubular network that comprises the transport system of the cell. So the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, we can see that here, this kind of teal colored coming through all over here, and we can see there's no rib ribosome. So the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is used in the synthesis of fats. So I like to remember this because the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, like if I think smooth, I think like fat. If you ever held like one of those fake fats, it's just kind of like smooth and 
And it like, I don't know, that's how I remember it, but you can use whatever you want. So it does not have ribosomes and it's a tubular network that comprises the transportation system of the cell. But most likely, if you do see a question on this on the exam, it's going to be, um, you know, what synthesizes fats? And you're going to know it's a smooth, or it's going to be which structure has ribosomes. And then you're going to know that it's the rough endoplasmic reticulum. That's kind of the things you should know about these. All right, so the cell wall is found in prokaryotes, plants, and fungi cells. And it is a stiff outer cell structure can see it's right here on our prokaryote cell. So the Golgi complex, I have to move my face because it's under my face, it's going to be right here, this gold, and this packages proteins and secretes materials outside the cell. We then have vacuoles, so we can see this is just a different image because the last one for some reason didn't have a vacuole in it. But this is the eukaryote cell. And we can see our nucleus here, our rough endoplasmic reticulum, our Golgi apparatus, our smooth endoplasmic reticulum. We have our mitochondria. So the vacuole is right here. And this is pretty much a storage container. It is in both pu prokaryotes and eukaryote cells. And they're pretty much sacs that are used for storage, digestion, and waste removal. There is only one vacuole in plant cells, and animal cells can have small, sometimes numerous vacuoles. All right, then there's something called a vesicle, and this is found again in both eukaryote and prokaryote cells. It is a small organelle within the cell, and it has a membrane and performs various functions, including moving materials within the cell. So a centrosome, this is located in animal cells, and it's in eukaryotic cells. And we can see it is located right here. And what this does is it com is comprised of a pair of centrals located at right angles to each other and surrounded by a protein. Centrals occur in pairs and they are cylinder shaped structures near the nucleus that is involved in cellular division. Each cylinder consists of nine groups of three tubules. And you will see more about these when we talk about mitosis and meiosis. The centrosome is involved in mitosis and the cell cycle. So also in animal cells specifically and eukaryotic cells is a lysome. And it's located under my face. So here's the lysome, right? So we're right here, this gray. And this digests proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates, and it also transports undigested substances to the cell membrane to be removed. Then in animal cells, eukaryotic cells can have a cilia. And this is an appendage that extends from the surface of the cell, the movement of which causes the cell to move. They can also result in fluid being moved by the cell. So these little finger-like structures, they move. So it can create movement for the cell or just moving things past the cell. Also, a flagellum is found in prokaryotes in some eukaryotic cells, and it's for locomotion. Cells usually have one, but they can have more than one, and they're longer than cilia. So we can see over here, the cilia, these are short, and this long piece is going to be the flagella. So we can also see up here comes like this and the flagellum is also right here so again used for locomotion all right and that is the end of module two so there will be a supplemental pdf that you guys can do which will be i believe filling out the different organelles and then you can take the quiz and then you can move on to module three i'll see you there bye